These are the now world famous faces of famine. Between 1984 and 1985, drought claimed the lives of nearly one million food refugees in northern Ethiopia. The rains had failed and disease destroyed crops in Sadamo, Ethiopia's breadbasket region. The nation said, never again. Today, the fields of Koram are a very different sight. Every time people talk about Ethiopia, it's usually depicted in terms of the Ethiopian farming and those kind of crises. But um, it's actually a stark contrast um, to see how, how green it is in many parts of Ethiopia. Ethiopia's thriving agriculture is thanks in part to new adaptation programs. In 2005, the government introduced the Safety Net program, which aims to help citizens solve their own food insecurity. Seven, eight million people get benefit from the Safety Net program throughout the country. We have focused on small-scale farming, and we have tried to provide assistance to small-scale farmers to be able to fend for themselves in the event of drought through improved uh, water management techniques, uh, improved product productivity and so on. One of Safety Net's first projects was to build new check dams around the country. The goal was to ensure that failed rains never again led to failed crops. Shiro and her husband have witnessed the region's recent flourish. The dam has two advantages. By harvesting the water, we are able to irrigate our fields. It helps us to protect us from the flood hazards that used to affect the downstream fields. With climate change gripping the Horn of Africa, rainfall has become increasingly erratic and surface temperatures continue to rise. Climate change is going to reinforce a number of extreme weather events. It's going to test the coping um, capacities of a number of smallholder farmers across Africa. Farmers can no longer rely on timely rainfall to irrigate their crops. Due to the availability of water for irrigation, we are producing vegetables and other crops throughout the year. The vegetables we are using for both our home consumption and for selling at the market. This is as a result of the irrigation system. Kelelom survived the 1984 famine. But while she escaped with her life, the drought impacted every aspect of her future. My father died just at the beginning of the famine. A month later, I decided to go to Alamata with my mother, but my mother refused to go anywhere, so we left her behind. I went with my brother and my child to Alamata. This is how we survived, and we are still living here. Like most people in Alamata, Kelelom is a farmer. What food she doesn't grow to feed her family, she sells for cash. And thanks to Safety Net's new drought-resistant seeds, her crops are thriving. The improved variety turf seed was introduced two years ago, and it's very good. As you have seen in some of the fields, the performance is good. Adaptation programs like these are building a brighter future for the people of Ethiopia.
I used to live in a small hut made of straw. Now I have bought this house, which is relatively better. So we are showing progress in our efforts. I want to see my children go through their education up to the highest possible level. I am illiterate. I don't want my children to be the same. I also want to get maximum benefit from the different programs going on here. It is now Ethiopia that food refugees affected by the drought in Somalia and northern Kenya are flocking to for aid. And with the expansion of programs like these around Africa, food refugees could soon exist only in the past. <laughs>